Welcome to The Driven Entrepreneur, where we sit down with visionaries, trailblazers, and entrepreneurs and discover why and how they do what they do. We'll get the backstory, plus plenty of life and business lessons along the way. Here's your host, Matt Browning. Hey, this episode is brought to you by my very own NLP practitioner course. I've been teaching neuro-linguistic programming, or NLP, for nearly 15 years. It is the most powerful tool for communication on the planet, and it can be yours today. For a very limited time, I'm giving away my entire NLP course workbook for free. Go to nlpwithmatt.com. All the patterns, all the tools, and the techniques of NLP in the complete course workbook, the same one that we use to teach our live certification classes, yours free. NLPwithmatt.com. Get it today. Let's get back to the show. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to The Driven Entrepreneur. It's Matt Browning. And dude, I'm having a good day. I'm having a good week. And I hope you are too. Uh, you know, this whole last season, I feel like we're really coming out of an old season into a new season in business, in life, in so many places. And one of the things that's coming up that I've heard from a lot of clients and listeners lately is it's like time to start new projects. You know, it's that springtime, spring cleaning, uh, fresh vision time. And there's a lot of projects that I had put on hold from last year that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kicking around going, what do I do next? And one of those has always been, you know, whether it's your first book or your next book, um, I have a couple of different ideas that I've been playing with of like, you know, I have a message that I want to get out. And I also want to use, you know, sometimes having a new book for a new reason is always a great thing. I don't think there's ever a time not to have a book. If you have a business, you need a book. And this week, that's exactly what I want to talk about. I guess this week is Helen Chang. Now, Helen is, well, how do I say this lightly? She's a big deal. She's, of course, a best-selling author herself and a speaker and entrepreneur like me and you. Uh, she's also the CEO and editor, uh, editorial director of Author Bridge Media. She has helped more than 400 entrepreneurs and authors to write, to brand, and publish the books to get credibility, to get more revenue, to gain raving fans, build your database. There's so much you can do with a book, and she's done that time and time again. She's also shared the stage and, and spoken at Cisco, um, uh, Key, uh, Key Spire Investors Summit, National Speaker Association, um, and a mutual friend, Craig Deswalt's Rockstar Marketing Bootcamp. He has several hundred entrepreneurs hungry for content at these amazing Rockstar Marketing Bootcamps, and Helen has, has spoken there as well. Uh, audiences love her, obviously, but more importantly than that is what we're doing together here today. Her purpose is to transform people's lives through stories, and books are how you do that through stories. Her clients include people like, I don't know, Michael Gerber of the E-Myth Books, Danny Johnson of ABC's Secret Millionaire, um, Scott McGilvery of HGTV's Income Property, and you know her clients who have written books with her have landed top media interviews like CNN, CNBC, Fox, Forbes, The View, Tim Ferriss Podcast, huge show with one book, everything can change. Helen, are you here and welcome to the show. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so delighted to be speaking to you and to your audience right now. Awesome. Look, we've, we've wanted to do this for a long time, um, almost coming up on a year now, and I'm so glad that the schedules have finally worked to get this done. Exciting. Sorry for the long intro, but there's just a lot I wanted to unpack, even in what I already said. So, Helen, you you obviously are in the entire, I'll just call it the book industry, and that's probably a poor term for it, but you do yep. everything from ghostwriting to working in editing to design to layout to publishing, the whole kit and caboodle, you have your own books. Have you always been a bookworm kind of a person? Do you, did you love books as a kid, or is this something that you kind of came into later in life? You know, I've always loved books. I started writing when I was five years old, and I would uh, take my finger and it would be raining outside. And we had this big glass window in the living room and the, the window would sort of like steam over from the, from the rain outside. And I would take my, I would use my finger and I would write poems on the window. Uh, and so it was super fun that way. I, I would write little myths, kind of like Aesop's fables. And I wrote my first, I wrote and published my first book when I was eight years old with construction paper and crayon. 
and uh, grew up to be a business journalist working with publications like Business Week, uh, San Francisco Chronicle, and uh, International Herald Tribune, uh, writing a lot of stories. I worked a lot with entrepreneurs. And you know, the thing is that I noticed writing about entrepreneurs is that the most successful entrepreneurs time and time again have been through incredible failure and incredible um, despair, shall we say, and, and even devastation before they figured out the methods, the strategies, the, the, the uh, secrets to actually being successful in their area and then finally reaching triumphant success and more importantly, being able to teach it and share it with others. So I've been so blessed to work with so many entrepreneurs and then you know what happened? I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you the story. I'm gonna share with you my origin story as a ghostwriter. Um, oh my gosh, I can't wait! Yeah. And she's gonna have a good one. I know you will. <laughs> so what happened was that you know I was this very successful uh, uh, journalist, and entrepreneurs that I knew started asking me, "Oh, can you ghostwrite my my book, my workbooks, and so on?" And um, so the first time an entrepreneur asked me to ghostwrite his book, I thought, "Oh my God, this is great! I've always loved books. I want to write books." And I was, I, and I had a meeting with him and his marketing manager, and they had all this marketing set up. They had the speaking engagements, the the infomercials, the mastery courses, the three day events, everything set up. And all they needed was a book to launch it because they had found time and again that a book is the single marketing uh, product that launches and lifts everything else, all the other marketing campaigns. So I was super excited. I loved what this author was about. I loved um, his energy, his story. And I was very motivated to inspire people and make a huge difference in the world through his, uh, through his story. So I started, I interviewed him and I, I got the hero's journey. I got seen in dialogue. I, I found out about how he had been bankrupt and lived in a garage uh, and had a foreclosure and with a wife and, and son and had almost lost them. And, and it was just a horrible time. And then he made a commitment to, uh, to do good in the world and to do right by his family. And he became an investor and eventually became very, very successful and um, multi, multi millionaire. And so I'm writing the book and I'm so excited. And I finished the book and I, uh, I handed in and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, maybe this can be the next rich dad, poor dad, or maybe this can be the next think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill. And so I'm in my living room. I'm on, I have my phone on speaker and I'm, and I'm uh, in front, I'm, you know, standing uh, in front of my beautiful cream colored sofa and the author's on the phone and the marketing manager's on the phone. And I'm super excited. And I'm thinking, oh, they're just going to give me all this praise for this book. And the marketing manager says, this isn't marketable. We can't publish. We're going to have to start over. And I, I say, oh, okay. And, you know, I hang up the phone and I do what any entrepreneur, writer, person, committed person would do at a time like this. I crawl into bed and I probably stay there for three days. And I think to myself, wow, I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not meant to do this. Maybe this isn't my path. And I really struggled with it. And I just wanted to give up. And I thought maybe I'm an award-winning journalist, but I'm not meant to write books. And I thought, well, you know, I promised them that I would do this. And I've got to keep my promise. So I got out of bed. I went to the bookstore. I studied all these best-selling business books. I really looked at what made them successful and what made them marketable, as well as telling a good story. And I went back and I rewrote that manuscript. And I handed it in. And I thought, oh, God, I hope this does it. I hope they'll still, you know, they'll still want to engage me. And the authors there the marketing manager's there. I'm in my living room pacing before my sofa. And the marketing manager says, this is good. We can publish. Awesome. And, yeah. And the book comes out 
And since then, we've had five editions, and the authors had me at his uh, three day book camps, uh, sorry, their uh, three day um, boot camps for his events. And he was kind enough to introduce me as his ghostwriter. And my name's on the book too, right? But he, he, you know, introduced me and people came up to me at the break and people had tears in their eyes and they were like, you wrote that book? Oh, that book changed our lives. It's changed our family's lives for generations to come. And it was just amazing. And I was like, wow, one book really can make a huge difference in people's lives. And, you know, here I think I'm just writing and I'm writing stories, but it really does have an impact on people, families, communities. And then later the author said to me, you know, just to, this is a couple of years later, uh, no, sorry, a couple of years ago, he, he said to me, you know, Helen, um, that book launched a business division for us that is now worth more than a hundred million dollars. And I was like, wow, that made me feel great. I bet you feel a lot better thinking, I'm glad I went back and did the second yeah. revision, right? And you, yeah. you wrote it. Because imagine if you just yeah. stuck with what yeah. was good enough, quote unquote, at the time, but you decided to go in and go deep on it. So Helen, I want to kind of pivot just a little bit. And you, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's an incredible first client to have, you know, and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we'd all be blessed by <laughs> maybe by having a client like that. And I'm sure as the world starts opening up, I want to talk about the the book industry a little bit with mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm, Matt. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, having worked with so many hundreds of different authors and books now, do you see any major shifts in how books are done, or maybe more importantly, what people are looking for in books? Because sometimes people, you know, I talk to people and they and they feel like it's still that old classic New York Times, and it's like being a a Frank Sinatra, you know, or a Dean Martin or something where back in the day, there's only a handful of people who are those famous authors and everyone else just is on Amazon. What, how do you see like the world of Amazon? It's a big question, but how do you see? Yeah. Yeah. I totally all get of it. That kind of together. I, and how, and where do you see it going? Yeah, I totally, totally get it. So let me ask you where, uh, where did your family, um, buy their latest uh, gadget, shall we say? 99% is Amazon. Correct. Where did your, uh, your friend, your entrepreneur friend, download the book that they wanted to read? Ooh, see, that's a question. I don't know. Um, Kindle. Kindle. You think it is Kindle, yeah. Yeah, it's Kindle. Okay. okay. <laughs> and people- You know that. I didn't know you knew Hank. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> Anyway, you get my point. So the thing is that Amazon now is the world's biggest bookseller. More than 60, 65% of books uh, sold in the world are sold through Amazon. So what that means is that anyone who has a book on Amazon can sell a book. And it also means that people don't really care how that book gets published they care about how they can get the book, which is through Amazon online, which is downloading through their tablet, whatever brand tablet that is, right. which is often through Kindle or listening on their phone through podcasts, through their, through, through their car. And oftentimes it's Audible, which is another Amazon book uh, seller. So, P, so let me ask you another question, okay? What's one book, uh, what's a best-selling book that you love? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just throw out one. Like Gary Vaynerchuk had a, a best-selling marketing book last year. It's a yellow book. I can't remember the name of it, okay? Um, do you know which book I'm talking about? No, no, I don't remember what book. But let's talk about a book. You asked me the question. So someone I've been really hot on lately in author is Mike Michalowicz. Shout oh, I out love Mike. Oh, I love Mike Michalowicz. And yeah. we, we follow Profit First and we just love him. Yeah, I do the same. So Profit First changed my business and my life. And yes. I'm reading Fix That Next right now. Yeah, me too. So I've, got, so I've gotten on track with, with you know, what Mike's doing and, and his whole, yeah. and I'm watching his process, I'm sure as you would. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. Well, 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 so let me ask you, who published his book 
or any of his books. I don't remember. Is it Penguin or Random House? Or I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's the point. <laughs> of course it doesn't. Who, who cares, right? Who cares? The point is that the author is the brand, not the publishing house. It's the influencer who has the great ideas who is the brand. It's the business, you know? Yeah, and that's very different from the 80s and 90s even exactly. or before when the, the exactly. big publishers were. The, and same with the movie industry and TV and everything exactly. else. Exactly, right? exactly, exactly. So what that means is that um, we have, some people have a very old movie in their minds, like from 10, 20 years ago, that these powerful publishing houses control the market. They don't, you know? And do, do they do they have value in what they do? Yeah, absolutely. And we actually help authors uh, go for traditional publishing deals. And we've had authors who, who've had uh, six-figure deals. So it's not that we're against them or hybrid publishers for that matter these days. But the point is that they offer different, um, the, the three different publishing formats, which is traditional publishing, hybrid publishing, and self-publishing all offer different benefits. And depending on what your goals are as an entrepreneur and as an author, one of those may or may not be useful for you. And, but the, the, the glow of traditional publishing is, is still great, but you have other options. And my question is, what's more important to you, uh, the publishing house's name or your name? Right. And, and, and honestly, that's a great question. I feel like in business, it has to be my name. It has to be the brand. Um, but there is, I think, a flip side of that conversation is there, Helen, about you can utilize, like if I went on Facebook right now and posted, just landed a deal with Penguin Publishing, I'm going to get more comments and, and likes and, and it, the elevation of my brand could be increased, I feel like, with that. Even Absolutely. if that may not be the right way to go. So I think that's kind of the, the two sides of that conversation I'm having. Yeah, absolutely. So the thing is that, um, the thing, <laughs> let me see. Okay. So let me talk about, uh, I'll share with you a couple of experiences from my authors. Okay. And everybody's different, right? So your situation might be different. So I want to throw out that caveat. But for example, Michael Gerber Right. Michael Gerber, he's the author of the E Myth book and the E Myth books, right? And we've done eight of his what's what's called vertical books, like so the E Myth Optometrist, the E Myth right. HVAC contractor. We've done eight the, the of the spin-offs. Sort yeah, of. exactly. So and we worked with him and I was there at the beginning of his uh, of this uh, publishing entity starting, which is Prodigy Business Books. So the thing is that back in the 70s, uh, when he started he landed contracts with different publishing. Well, well, he started with one publishing house, right? And then his next books, he went to a different publishing house, another publishing house. And the, the advances were six, six figures, were, you know, if not seven figures, they were very, very substantial for him. But of, yeah, course, of course, yeah, the, the sales, of course, have to balance out the advance. Otherwise, you get a blacklist in the publishing industry. You have to sell. Right. This is this is a draw versus commission. This is an advance. Exactly. Sales, not a uh, here's your money. Congratulations. Correct. 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 Okay. Very important to understand. Correct. So by the 2010s, he wanted to. Michael Gerber wanted to start creating more. He wanted the Emith, uh, like I said, the Emith optometrist, the Emith chiropractor, the Emith real estate agent, the real the Emith. Um, uh, sure. and at this point, it's almost unlimited, right? It's exactly. like the e insert business industry. Exactly. So the thing is that he goes to his traditional publisher and the traditional publisher is like, well, it's going to take two months. Uh, sorry, two years. <laughs> it's going to take two years to come out. You're going to have to give us this, this, and this. You can only, you're still only going to make like 10%, 12% royalty on all the books you sell. We're going to own everything. Um, and Michael's like, oh, that's going to take too long. We need to be churning these out like every other month, every third month kind of thing, every six months at most, right? And that's just way, way, way too long. And for the business plan that he wanted to create, self-publishing was the fastest, most efficient, most effective way to go. So uh, I was there when he set up Prodigy Business Books, and we started this uh, vertical uh, book series. And, uh, you know, it became a templated design, but it looks extremely professional. You can't tell the difference when you look at it and the editing 
obviously is top notch. The writing is top notch. So you really can't tell the difference in terms of the quality, be, uh, the, the quality between a traditional versus self-published. Now, granted, Michael Gerber is a brand name. He's already known, right? So it's different. But, but how many people started with self-publishing? Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, started with a self-published book that he primarily wanted to sell to Amway. And it sold through Amway. And then the publisher said, wow, this is making a lot of money. Let's see if we can buy it. Same thing with um, the Celestine Prophecy. Same thing with- uh, yeah, There's quite a few of those. I didn't exactly. realize. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So again, those are books that you don't remember who the publishing company is. You remember the title of the book. You remember the author of the book. So for an author, for a lot of the authors that we work with, they're entrepreneurs. So they understand setting up a business. They understand that they're going to be the ones out there marketing, promoting, uh, and, and pushing a book and speaking. And they understand that the book is part of an overall ecosystem of a business. Now, when you go to a traditional publisher, and like I said, I, I really, I work with authors who go that route. Okay. So I don't have anything against it. We do. We work. Understood. With, yeah. Understood. Okay. <laughs> and, and I have, but. and I have top literary agents that I can pitch to no problem at all. The issue for a lot of these authors is as entrepreneurs, it's like, Hey, look, I'm going to be doing all the work anyway, promoting. Do I want to only get 10% of my sales? Do I, do I want to purchase all my books from this publisher that I'm going to give away free at my speaking events or my other events? Or maybe not free, but, you know, at a discount. No, no. Well, now, and now right? you're, you're getting to that next subject, Helen, is... I think you're talking about what are we going to do with our book? And would you say that's one of the first things to decide, like before you write, before you figure out what yes. road you're going down is what's the purpose of this book? What am I yes. going to do with it? That's the first. Am I using this as a list builder or am I actually trying to? Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. Are there times when, and I guess there probably are, but times when an author wants to do a book and because I, I can't, it's hard for me to think that I want to do a book to genuinely kind of quote unquote, make big money like from book sales. I look at the book and go, man, I can speak and give it away. I could do a book funnel online. I can use it for prestige. Most of the things I want to do with my book don't include trying to make, you know, a $20 sale. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, we start our authors off with a, uh, a questionnaire and we actually have something called the create your book vision questionnaire. And, uh, and we're going to give it to uh, your listeners as a gift as well. But the first question we ask is, what is your book purpose? Right. What is your purpose, right? Is it credibility? Is it revenue? Is it to inspire people is it, and make a huge impact in the world? Is it to leave a legacy or to fulfill some kind of uh, personal dream, right? The, those are the top five and the truth is that any book can fulfill all of those purposes. But if you're clear about which is the most important purpose, that, that shapes what the book is going to look like, what it's going to feel like, how long it's going to be, how short it's going to be, how it's going to be published, how you're going to get it out, and what your personal strategy is for it as a business and as an entrepreneur. Right? Yeah, it makes, makes perfect sense. Because yeah. I'm sure there's quite a lot of people that I've talked to that – like even me, you know, I think, okay, the last book I wanted to write mostly for prestige, the firebox principle. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, as we talked about great, just before we went great to book, tape. by the way, Matt, Oh, thanks, Alan. <laughs> just before we went to tape, we, you were talking about, I asked you about multi-author books and you said, well, it's kind of tongue in cheek. We, you know, we like to do something that looks like a real book. And I know what you mean. It's like, this is a book that would be in Barnes and Noble. This is a book that would, that you could see on the New yes. York times. This yes. is one author, one book. I get that. That's why I wanted this book. So people would take me almost more seriously. Yes. But then I have another book in my, in my heart that I go, I kind of just want to write a parenting book and I don't want a book funnel for it. And I don't want to try to make a whole market out of it. I could, but I just sort of want to do that one day. Mm -hmm. Is that worth it to do books like that? Or is that a case by case individual basis? 
You know, we actually have an author. She's a, she was a yoga teacher and she wanted to write uh, books, children's books about yoga. And she approached us and I was like, well, you know, we don't really do children's books. And she said, well, Helen, you know, you have to. And so um, I originally had a team member uh, do it and, and she ended up um, passing, shall we say. Uh, she actually literally ended up passing. And so the author was like, oh, Helen, you've got to do this. You've got to continue these series of books. And I said, um, well, okay, I've got storytelling methods. Let's see if I can apply it. But I'm just warning you, I, I'm not an expert in children's books. Well, we wrote our book and now she's getting Newbery Award medals and all kinds of awards in the children's books categories for her books that I wrote. <laughs> We're going to be writing more more children's books in the future. But you got a new category now. Congrats. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. But here's the thing. Our purpose is to transform people's lives through stories. So I'm not wedded to a particular format of stories or format of lives or or age of lives, shall we say, right? And the the elements, the basic elements of storytelling are are the same universally across all stories. And when I work with an entrepreneur, one of the things we identify is their expert origin story, because that's a very, very key story that launches them on their journey to becoming an expert and uh, a, a master in the field that they now are writing about in their book. And so with a children's book, it's the same thing. You have a key character and they have to endure conflict of some sort and somehow they come out at the end of it, learning something, having some kind of a wisdom from it. And children love it because they have their own struggles too. And when you can identify that in a story, they really appreciate that. So I think that's the essence of it, you know, regardless of what type or what category or what genre is that you need to have a story where someone has something that they have to overcome and they do. And do you feel like, I, I love that about that story, you know, um, I, I, I quote um, a former client, a friend of mine, uh, Dr. James Key, constantly at seminars when he defined a story as a story being a character who wants something, who overcomes obstacles to get it, and is forever changed in the process. And that key element is understanding the character and why they're there and what they're going through. I think that's absolutely epic. There's also, as you're saying that, Helen, I feel like there's it's not just a story in the book, but it's almost like, what if we take a meta perspective, we chunk out, you know, kind of go above and say, what's the story of, of not just like the author inside the book, right? Like what's my origin story as a business owner, but what's the story of me writing the book? What's the story of me, the audience? What's the, what's the timeliness of it? Who, what do they care about? Exactly. Someone's going to run into a bookstore and run into this book. And what does it do for them? You know, going back to those Mike McCallowitz books, you know, I think of the story and it's like, man, I'm in the hamster wheel of business, working hard, making money, but not having longevity and f fighting for the next sale. And he has this message on his heart that transforms businesses. So he goes, I'm going to get this book and it's going to start to impact these people. And now all of us villagers come around saying, yay, Mike, thank you for slaying the dragon, yes, right? Exactly, exactly. The cash eating dragon, you're the best. But there's a story in, in the book yes, itself. Yes. Not just within the book. Does that make sense? Totally, totally. You know, uh, like I said, in this Create My Book vision, you know, part of the vision is looking at who you want to speak to and why. And what what is it, what is it, I mean, there's two parts to the to the questions, right? One is about you as an author and what's in it for you. And the other one is your reader and what's in it for them. Like, why, are, what are they going to get out of it? And I think what happens is that, you know, it, all of us are get, going through a number of story arcs at any given time in our lives, right? A story arc as a parent, a story arc Absolutely. as an entrepreneur, a story arc as a, as a, as a son or a daughter or an uncle or a community member or whatever, right? And that story arc at any given time is either beginning, going through a battle, coming to a climax or coming to an end. And when there's no success, then instead of being a success, instead of being a, a win, it's a tragedy, right? So 
So all of us are going through that at any given time. And a book is sort of like a chronicle of the arc that you've already completed, that you have gained wisdom in, that you can now share with others, right? So I'm sure you, Matt, you're a successful entrepreneur. So maybe your current arc is about, okay, well, how do I get to the next level of writing a book? But if you look at a past arc, you know, hitting your first six figures, for example, that's a complete story arc that someone is going to be inspired by. That someone who's just starting out is going to be inspired by, right? So a book, a lot of times is about completing and acknowledging the story arcs that we've already gone through, the wisdom that we've already gained. That's how I see it. And when you finish a book, there's that sense of, ah, oh, I've, I've, I've made my peace with myself about yes. that experience I had. I don't have to I don't have to struggle about it. I don't have to fight about it. I, have, I don't have to have it spinning around in my head wishing that someday I'll tell it because it's already been told. It, you've already told it in a book. And now it's time to move on to the next story arc. That's really good. I love that. And, and that, that fits for me, I feel like, Helen, really tightly with what, when I look at my future, looking back, like a lot of people hopefully do. Um, I think of, you know, I'm 40 years old this year. If I think, you know, me 60, looking back at what I've done in 20 years, I feel like there's probably messages and moments and arcs that are in my heart that I'm walking through. I've yet to walk through. I already have that probably need to come to a book in fruition, but not everything has to be a book. You know, some things I might go, maybe I'm going to do a course about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I preach about that at church. Maybe this is something that just has stamped on my family's life and we're going to move on. But some things I feel like, you know, there's, there's a book in this for me. Can we, as we wind down here, Helen, I want to ask you, um, talking about those, um, the prestige elements, you know, of what else you can use your book for besides selling a bunch of books or even besides getting clients and all that. Um, I was telling you again, before we went to tape, just one of the methods that I teach about upping the game in business and people want to make more money. You got to get better clients to make better money. To get better clients, you need to be seen as an elite version of you. You know, Tiffany's drawer, not the Walmart drawer, so to speak. And the greatest uh, diamond bracelet of the best quality, if it sells in a Walmart drawer, is going to be Walmart prices. So if you want to get to that, that elite level, you need to have, I call it the five elite formula. Um, the first item, which is exactly up your alley, is having an elite book. Can you speak to briefly the value in professionally done um, New York Times worthy covers, graphics, layout, book, essentially having a professional, whether you're self-publishing or not, working with someone like you, having a professional do this versus the other side of the conversation, I feel like, right or wrong, the other side is, hey, who cares? get a book out there because you can use it as a funnel, get a book out there for all these different reasons. You just need to have the book. I help clients get on TV and it's like just having the book, even if it doesn't look good, I, I, don't, I don't recommend that, right? But just having a book can be enough to get you booked on television easier, booked on podcasts, get on the radio, all that sort of stuff. What is your take on the value of a prestigious looking, feeling book versus kind of, down and dirty, get it done on the cheap. Yeah, I mean, both have value. Honestly, both have value. I think the question is, what is your purpose? And what are your core values as a person, as an entrepreneur, as an author? You know, Michael Gerber used to say, if you're going to write a book, write a book. You know, if, you're, if you just want to get out, it's kind of like, do you want McDonald's or do you want Chipotle or do you want... Uh, I don't know, George is by the, by the bay, by the ocean, you know? Um, so I, I kind of feel like the thing is that these days books have ratings on Amazon. You can get a book out there and get one and two stars, but you got your book out there. Sure. Right. Right. And, and after your launch, Okay, you you can get a, a a you can be an Amazon number one bestseller in 
you know, in 12 hours, really. But if nobody reads your book or likes your book or refers your book or talks about your book, your, your, your book is a flash in the pan. So what? Who cares? Like, what kind of significance have you had in the world? And that's totally okay, right? You know, some people just need that, right? What if you're using it for a purpose, like we talked about? Right, if you're like, right. hey, I want this book because I'm going to launch this new program and I'm going to do a, a lead push or whatever. It's yeah. like, okay. Yeah, that's, but that's fine. like a lead magnet, right? It's not really a book. Exactly. It, it's like, and uh, and I've read wonderful lead magnets, right? That are quote unquote books, right? Ebooks. And I've gotten tons of value out of them. Um, a book is a very unique product in that it's something that people are going to talk about, just like we've been talking about Mike Michalowicz, because the content was awesome. It really transformed our lives as entrepreneurs, right? So we're yes. talking about it's had impact. Those books are going to be around for a long time. And those books, in my opinion, are going to become classics, you know, because they have such impact on people's lives. And whether or not Michael had Michael McCallowitz had that intention or not, I believe that that's what's going to happen. So, um, so I think, and, and, you know, not that all books have to be perfect necessarily. Sometimes it's more important just to get something done and get it out than to drag on and on and on to have a quote unquote perfect book. Right. And these days with Amazon, the algorithm, the algorithms are such that it's more important to have a lot of books or several titles, regardless of how long those books are, than to have one great single book. So interesting. So going back to Michael, Michael Gerber's e-myth for fill in the blank yes. industry, you'd rather have 10, 20, 30 potentially or more because you're you're ranking and you're showing up. And the the e-myth, for instance, the e-myth might not show up when you type in. HVAC business growth books or something, but the e-myth for HVAC companies will. Right, right, exactly, right? So we actually have authors, I mean, we do books that are like 88 pages, 120 pages. We, of course, do 200, 300 page books too, but we have a lot that are 88 page and 120 page, and they're very, very credible. They're professionally done. Why 88, why 120, why two, 300? <laughs> uh, 88 is the minimum number you need to get on Amazon. Oh, so if you are 80 pages, what happens? You, you Do they put you in the short read or it doesn't consider a book? It's not considered a book. You don't qualify to upload it. Didn't know that. That's yeah. great. Yeah, you can have eight blank pages and eight, 80 pages of text and it's fine. It doesn't matter, right? But Oh, you have to have a count of 88 pages. A count right? of 88 published pages. Yes, correct. Yeah. Right? In order to qualify to and and there's certain dimensions it has to be of course right maybe the size of a palm uh, is a minimum uh, that's what we work with so we get those up 120 pages they they're slightly bigger but they're not intimidating they're readable and speakers can still hold it up from the stage and it looks good so 120 pages we found has been a very good number it's been a sweet spot for us um, the 200 to 300 pages the classic book size, six by nine, uh, you know, uh, uh, and we call that the thought leader book. So the 88 page, we call it the instant credibility book, the 120 yep. page, we call it the trusted expert book. And then you have the classic thought leader book. So what we're finding is that we have a lot of authors who are doing books at the 120 page uh, size or the 88 page size for that matter. And then they're just doing uh, multiple books. This is best. Look, not that I haven't enjoyed the entire interview, but this is really getting in that gold diamond <laughs> uh, area. Because mm -hmm. how powerful. Do, does do the, does the, the multiples of 16 still matter in the publishing industry? I remember that was a thing when I wrote my first book in 2007. And yeah. I self-published and had to get a crate of books shipped to my house because yeah. there wasn't space yeah and now you know the um whatever they call it now, now Amazon. yeah now it's multiples of four four pages oh, nice. yeah okay. four pages because of the uh offset printing uh, i was wondering with the 88 and 120 i go oh, that's not 16 anymore yeah. clearly that must have changed yeah the print on demand uh printers allow for multiples of four this is how far out i am in the world helen oh you're not off you're you're on your way <laughs> to having series of books you know so you've already got two you're 
you're on your way and you're evolving. You've got new story arcs and you've got new books to write. And I would say that's true for anyone who's listening. You've got, you know, no matter how, you know, see, the thing is that when we're working in a business on a day-to-day level, we're like, oh God, I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. I still haven't this, I haven't gotten to that. But the truth is that we've achieved so much already that there are people out there who are dying to be where we already are. And they would love to hear our stories of how we got to where we are now, right? So there's always another book to be written that's going to help somebody out there. If, if, if only a child, you know, there's somebody. That's so good. Maybe even your own child. Well, Helen, this has been an amazing conversation and uh, time has gone, unfortunately, but I know you mentioned a great resource and I want you, if you would, please plug that gift. Uh, I think everybody should grab this. It's the Create My Book Vision Blueprint. Tell us where we can get that, what's in it, and uh, and anything else you want to plug. You know, feel free. Tell us where how to follow you. Yeah. So um, the free gift, you can go to the URL, free gifts from helen.com gifts with an s from helen.com free gifts from helen.com uh you can also reach me at authorbridgemedia.com authorbridgemedia.com so uh yeah those are the places to reach me and it's been such a pleasure uh speaking with you matt i think your listeners are going to enjoy the create my book vision so that they can get started So that you listening, you can get started with your book and just thinking about how you want to move and how you're going to make an impact in the world and your business. Amazing. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Matt. All right, guys, that's the show this week. Well, what an amazing interview. Uh, My thanks to Helen Chang uh, with the Create My Book Vision Blueprint. You can find out more again at freegiftsfromhelen.com. Grab that because, well, it's free, but it doesn't mean the value is free. The value is amazing when you look at, you know, really how if you have a book on your heart, if you're thinking about a book, if you're not sure why you need a book, what the purpose is, what you're going to use it for, or if we're talking about, you know, the, I keep plugging Mike Michalowicz, but phenomenal book series. What I love is every book has this one seed, this one concept. So maybe you need help figuring out what your concept is. Um, Helen is the place to go at authorbridgemedia.com. So thanks again to my guest, Helen. And hey, thank you for listening to this show. I hope you get as much out of it as I do putting into it. Stay out there this weekend and enjoy. Stay driven. Is that the thing? Yeah, we're going to end with it. We're just going to keep doing that. I'm going to say stay driven and you're going to stay driven. All right, entrepreneur. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.